What's going on guys? Clint here with Classic Firearms and we've got Matt back today. What's up? And guys, Guten Tag, my friends! Guten Tag! Guten Tag. Oh, why were you under the table? Uh, Alec? I forgot you were there, actually. Das. Well, that was fun. Thanks, Alec, for appearing. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome back, man. I really appreciate it, guys. So, guys, I was out on vacation in Nashville where we will be vacation. shortly. Yeah, yeah, it was my wife's birthday. I had to be there. All right, anyway, so NRA show is coming up. Be looking out for our film on that in April. But we're here to talk about Lugas. Yes. That's Lugas. All right, and so here's how we're going to do it. Guys, we are going, out of us three, going to go through about 15 guns each. And we're, one, going to be showing you off what we've got, and two, we're going to select our favorites and then let you guys have the option of buying what you see. Yeah. Yeah. That so works. Like a long game of I show you mine, you show me yours, kind of? All right, let's go ahead and start. <laughs> <laughs> so what Clint was saying, guys, we have not looked through these at all. This is going to be the first unboxing. We pulled these right out of the shipping crate. We got them in. So without further ado, there is yours, sir. There is yours. And... Here is mine. All right. Sweet. So I've got a 1906. I have a 1906 as well. And I have an 0624. Nice. So 06, 0624. Let's. Is there much as far as the difference goes on these guys? Because. I mean, so you will see a few small cosmetic changes. Like uh, you see the 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 hinge here on the uh, mechanism. Mm -hmm. You know, these are. You know that famous kind of. Uh, you know breaking uh right that 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 breach right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever we're trying to see the hinge yeah. the arm all of that kind of good stuff toggle right. lock that's the yes toggle there lock. it is yeah. so uh the, the hinge here on the toggle lock has uh nearly or, or texture on mine it does not have any on yours okay um yours is an 0629 actually because it's got the swiss shield oh well this one's just not labeled correctly it's not labeled correctly. how about that um <laughs> And it also has the open. Well, yeah. well, actually, that's really kind of weird. So the first one's a weird one. Yeah, because so, normally you wouldn't expect to see a Swiss shield on the top of uh, until like you get to like the 0629s, the later models. Right. Um, so, but this one does have the open safety of an early pistol. Um, Right, and the 06s are the ones that I thought actually had all the knurling, right. the texturing, yeah. Um, yeah. The, like yours, right? Yeah, that's what I say. Mine has all the features yeah, exactly. like that, and then um, on this safety as well. So it might be that this toggle lock was actually a replacement piece. That this is a the frame is a 1906 model okay. um, because it does have you know the wood grips, the open safety, uh, the textures on the controls here, right? Uh, which you would expect for the early guns. But since it's got no texture here on the hoggle and it's got that Swiss shield, that may have been added as a replacement part. Okay, well, very cool. So something first one of these I think I've seen like that honestly. So pretty neat. All right. So cool. yours, let me see the markings on the top of yours. So mm, ours actually have different markings. Yours mm -hmm. has the Waffenfabrik burn, right. and then mine has the Swiss logo. And then what is what is this that I'm looking so at right here? DWM is a manufacturer in Germany. They you guys can see that. were the original manufacturer of all of the 1906, uh, 1906 models for Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at a 1906, Basically, they're all going to be DWM marked. Uh, when you move into the 0624s, you might see some DWM, or a lot of times we do see them now made in Waffenfabrik Burn, which is in Switzerland. By the time you get to the 0629s, they're gotcha. all going to be made in Waffenfabrik Burn. Right. Gotcha. Nice. Cool. Well, I like my first one so far. Yeah, I feel since it's the first one, you kind of have to like leave yeah. it on the table. That's your your kind of you kind of like your yeah, standard, my, right? my yeah. standard. All right, let's. I'm going to grab one from the back. So there you all are. Right. So oh, that, that, that one says 29 here. on it. We'll see how accurate that is. I also want to mention about how lucky we are. Like, this is the third day in a row out yeah, there to play with some <laughs> cool Swiss firearms. The Sorry, you Swiss missed that. Fiesta. Yeah, you know, oh, happy sweet. wife, happy life, right? Yeah. Right. So mine has that leather tang that's on there. This is a 1906, yeah. 1906 with the leather tang. That is super cool. I like that feature a lot. Yeah. And then the same thing on this one, guys. It has the Swiss crest and the, what did you call it? The DM? Uh, DWM. DWM, yeah. there you go. And then that leather tang that's right there. I find this, uh, the toggle locks are sometimes a little awkward, especially, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like I've got definitely a 29 here. So you've got that Swiss shield. And the 29 is gonna differ from the 24 and the 06 because you'll notice, uh, well, probably some cost-saving measures, but also advancement in technology at the time. We've got Bakelite grips now, which may or 
I guess you could say they're probably a little bit more cost effective, but I think they're probably a little bit more durable than your standard wood. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also not going to have the knurling or the texturing like on the toggle lock or on the takedown lever, the safety lever, uh, but the magazine release. Yeah, the magazine release, and yeah. Because that's just at least from what I've seen on the other 06s. Do you have a 06 there? Yeah, and I was going to yeah. say another thing I was looking at too. This one looks like it has some unfinished wood yeah, on oh, the bottom oh, of this. Yeah. yeah, the magazine base plates should be wood. Which yeah, is, but it's yeah. not, you know, it doesn't have that high gloss like yeah. yours is, which is, I think, kind of so, cool. So this is actually also Bakelite now. Yeah. Okay, as, yeah. as we move forward in time, they replace yeah. that wood base plate with uh, Bakelite. Um, and then, of course, I don't remember if we mentioned it specifically, but the safety becomes completely enclosed. Yeah. The grip safety. Um, you know, I, I do like the pistol. Um, this one does have a little bit of wear here on parts of it. Um, nothing too extreme, but certainly, you know, maybe from sitting in a holster or something. Yeah. Um, but I, I have to say, I kind of like the 24 better than the 29. Yeah. Or at least I'm gonna, that 24 better than this 29. Right. I think I'm going to replace mine because I like the leather tang. Yeah, the leather tang is kind of cool. Really sweet. So this one will just sit I'm going to keep that one there because it's got some weird stuff going on with it and I like weird stuff. So. Let's see. From the back again. There you are, sir. Thank you. Come over to this one over here. All right. Cool. And I'll choose for the middle pile this time. I like the wood grips on this guy as soon as it opened it up. See, that yeah. looks pretty sweet. Yeah, man. I, I really like like earlier guns. They have yeah. those wood grips. They, I, I yeah. think they look so much better. Yeah. Um, and I like the, the kind of gold accents you see on the other guns. Mm -hmm. You know, the controls being uh, finished differently looks really cool. Yeah, I agree. And then on this one that I'm looking at, guys, the wood handles on this one are in really, really good shape. And the checkering feels really nice in my hand. I know one of the other ones, the first one that I picked up, the checkering was there, but it had kind of been worn just a little bit, so it wasn't as aggressive as this is. But this feels really, really nice in my hand. Yeah, I am. Uh I'm liking this one. All right, so I'm replacing my first one. So this one, <laughs> this one does have kind of a, an unusual marking. So you had noticed the DWM for you know again this is a 1906. Mm -hmm. so you would expect that, and then this one has the Swiss oh. signia, but it's in like a shield, an yeah, institution yeah. instead of being like I think yours was a just kind of a cross or yeah, or a yeah. cross or something weird, kind of like a sunburst almost. Yeah. Um, but this one's on like an institution, so. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and it goes to show, too, just all the little differences in mm -hmm. these guys. Mm -hmm. And think about it, I mean, how old are these guns? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, so it's like, man, so I'm sure that they've seen a lot, been through a lot, and they've changed over the years, especially if there's any type of arsenal refinishing or anything like that at one point in time, like, you know, that toggle lock being so, exchanged. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm going to keep the, the new uh, this pistol with the, the cool Swiss symbol on it. Um, <laughs> all right, replace my, there you go. Thank you. And pull from the back pile again. Let's see what we got now. All right, so the bluing on mine is definitely wearing in a different fashion. It looks almost more like it's plum, which I think is pretty sweet. And then it looks like it's got more of a brass finish. Yeah. You know, you know the yeah, like the chemistry sweet. at the time wasn't as consistent as, mm -hmm. as it is now. And so sometimes different materials would make it into the chemical solutions to blue firearms. Right. And so as they wore and lightened up, you can see that you can see you know pistols that become more plum or more like an actual blue instead of like a dark black or even green or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like this one that I'm looking at here, guys, you can see it has that kind of a deep purple look to yeah. it. It looks really, really nice. And one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the triggers that yeah. are in these Luger pistols, guys. If you can see this, you have the slightest little bit of take up. I mean, and you hit a very defined wall right there. And then yeah, it is breaks. just, yeah, it is incredible. Um, also, another thing that we've mentioned in the past two videos uh, yeah. are those P marks. That you know, again, mm -hmm. part of the Swiss military tradition. Yeah. Um, you know, they did conscript people into the military, but you know, when you left the military, you did have the option to purchase firearms that you were issued. Mm -hmm. um, now, pistol is more of an officer kind of thing, rather than enlisted man. Yeah. But you know, officers could do this as well. And so, right here on this trigger guard, you can see an example of a P stamping. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of these traits that you were mentioning specifically may be custom options that you'll see on the product page. So whether you want to specifically guarantee a P mark or one of those cool variations of the crest mm -hmm. that uh, Alec and I have found so far. Um, as much as I do think this is a pretty pistol, I'm going to keep the one. I like this one a lot because the blue in on this one is really nice, but I still think the leather tang. All right, let's keep on going. Let's speed things up a little bit here because as cool as these are, we got quite a bit to go through. and. Yeah. 
think I found my new favorite one. I got a leather tang. Did you? Yeah, look at that. Ah, look at that little guy. Got tang. <laughs> Just want to give you a quick view. Yeah, and I'll give you guys a quick view of this one as well. It still has that really, really nice blue in on it. The, the knurlings here, and then on the safety as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure yeah. you know, if the, the 64 part. But. Yeah, right. So I've got another one here that's marked with P64 on it. Um, so I'm not sure what the 64 refers to, but it is showing to be P marked. And I think this one's going to be taking taking my place as my favorite because the pistol or the, the grip on itself looks phenomenal. You got the leather tang on there, which obviously we're fans of, and the bluing and finish all around on this guy looks really good. Hmm. So uh, I found know. another leather tang. Oh, did you now? Yeah. So this one, let me see if I can get this one out. So the leather tang on this one that I just pulled out, guys, is actually smaller than the one that's on this guy right here. So I don't know if this camera will pick it up good, but there's a definite size difference. And I think just from holding this one, I like the smaller tang a little bit better. If it's a little bit better <laughs> yeah. in my hand. You like smaller tangs. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's take that over. One. Yeah, I'm gonna open my box actually. So that way, you can everyone at home, okay. yeah, everyone at home can, can keep an eye on that, and uh, I think it'll be a little more visually interesting than just seeing a closed box. Well, that one's got a big old P mark on it. You're this guy old. here. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's got a big P on the side of it there, so it shows that private ownership. Pretty sweet. And again, there's that Swiss shield that you were talking about. That's that real large inlay. And the DWM marking as well. Because you're Swiss, uh, so yeah, you got a shield mm -hmm. too. Yeah, that's exactly. So this one I have here is a 29. It doesn't have that knurling or on the safety or anything like that or on the magazine release. Um, the grip is really nice on this one though. If the checkering feels really, really nice. Still not as cool as that one to me anyways. Maybe I'm just a, a sucker for the older kind of guns, but yeah. so far I, I can't say I found anything that I'd want to replace this. I want to say that the one that I just had is not as special as this one, <laughs> but all these guns are super <laughs> special. So they... uh, yeah, for sure. All right, well, as soon as I say that, I find one I think I might like to replace my favorite with, um, primarily because I like the grips a little bit better. Um, you can see that these grips are kind of dark. These other grips are a little bit lighter of a brown. I think it's a little bit more attractive. Other than that, they're both 1906 models. They both have that cool Swiss shield right on the top there. And so, uh, and, and this was actually made even a little bit earlier based off the serial number prefix, uh, sorry, the serial number sequence. So this one says uh, 13460 and this one is 11682. So it's a little bit earlier. And I have to say, I really like the look of that grip. So I'm gonna. Yeah, I think I'm going to replace mine too. So with this one, guys, one thing I like about this one is it has the lighter, uh, the lighter color wood here, but like you were talking about, it's got those kind of bronze slash gold mm -hmm. accents um, kind of all around it. So yeah, I think... Uh, What's up with the P marking in this guy? It looks like it's backwards and upside down. So I, I think that's actually a proof marking. I don't, I don't think that's like the same kind of P marking. So I believe that's like a Swiss talking proof about right there. Not so sure. So let me know down in the comments if you know exactly what this is. Also, what's your favorite bin so far? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm curious. So I know that there's people out there who like Lugers are their obsession. Like right. there are people out there who like really get into all the nuances and, and differences between different models. Yeah. And so I'm sure that they can help us out with finding out what some of these marks mean. Probably. I like throw me one now. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, talking about someone being obsessed with Lugers, Lugers happen to be one of my favorite handguns. And coincidentally, one of the biggest fights I got into with a girlfriend at the time, I bought a PO8 Luger. Oh. Didn't tell her about it. The my man. was a pretty penny, <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, that's funny. Got another 29 that looks very clean. Yeah, mine is a 29 as well. The bluing on this guy looks really, really good. Thank you, sir. Look, I got a 29. Um, so that's another thing. Uh, you know, you saw Alex gonna have black bake, uh, poly, bake light grips, yeah. polymer grips. Sometimes they are brown. Um, so uh, it's not sure if we would do a custom option for grip color, but that's just kind of another notable uh, difference, kind of like the different appearances of the various wood grips. Yeah, same here. Another 29 with the brown. Yeah. 
Uh, I guess another thing to keep in mind, folks, is that these Lugers are chambered in 7.65 Luger or 30 caliber uh, Luger, 7.65 Parabellum, goes by a couple names. But, uh, you know, so when you keep in mind that, uh, you know, that is what these pistols are chambered for if you wanted to take them and actually shoot them. Now, of course, a lot of people collect them just for the beauty and mechanical complexity and history. Everything that is, you know, with these Lugers and a lot of the guns that were produced at the time, they're incredible, but they're absolutely over-engineered. Yeah. 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 So you have to kind of marvel at the amount of precision you need to make something like this tile lock work, where it's effectively just a delayed blowback system where it's overcoming the disadvantage of having to make this, this you know, kink up this, and buckle. Um, but even with all that precision, like modern firearms are at least a little bit more elegant in how they operate. Yeah. Now, this is kind of a, a, something that we could look out for is, like you can still see the checkering on these grips, but to the touch, they're effectively completely flat. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's still kind of a nice aesthetic, but as far as getting a grip on your handgun, it doesn't really accomplish anything at this point. Yeah. <laughs> right. You need one, Clint? Yeah, man. Throw me on there you another go. One. So, I think, I think I'm going to trade up again. So, oh, really? both of these are um, 19, these 1906s. But the one that I had earlier, we were talking about, had those kind of cool features about it. But the new one that I'm holding has a little bit, you know, even lighter grips to it. So I think we'll get the cases mixed up. <laughs> yep, you were getting traded, pal. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. I feel like I'm the, uh, the dedicated husband here. I'm just yeah. sticking with my we're in, a, we're in the sixth round in the dra draft pick right now. Yeah, we're, right? We're getting down. I'm so, I mean, as much as I like the appearance of the better, well, that's one of the things that's nice about the Bakelite grips is it does, yeah. I think, have a better grip. Yeah, they're, they're going to last a little bit longer. Oh, mine's got a green sticker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that tops them all. Yeah. That's a hand select if I've ever seen one. So this one's looking really nice as well. Bluing looks good. Checkering, everything looks really good on this yeah. guy. So again, just to, I was gonna say I have yet to come across one that doesn't look good. Oh yeah, yeah. these things are yeah, it's pretty it, awesome. it's hard because I know someone in the comment section is gonna be like, I'm so jealous of you guys, or how could you not call that gun beautiful? Yeah. Trust me, they are all beautiful. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, by the time we get to the 1929 uh, uh, variations, you know, they all have that kind of very standardized Swiss yeah. shield. Yes, um, and they're all made in, in Switzerland. Uh, what's interesting is the variation that you can see. In some of the early ones, as far as their shield, uh, the Swiss markings go, you know, either none or, you know, the shield, the starburst, it's, right. it's all kind of, you know, in flux in those early guns, I guess. They didn't standardize. Very cool. This guy. Clear as day, P marking on that guy right up front, too. Now, I really doubt the camera would pick up something with this kind of fine, but one of the things I find interesting is how low the finish machining is on yeah. some of them. Like, I mean, it is a beautiful gun. I'm not trying to take anything away from it by saying that, but like if you look very carefully, like you can still see little swirls back here where they were cutting out on on the metal with the with tooling. And I guess you know that's one thing you can chalk up to the fact that even though it's a very precision quality piece of machinery, yep. it's still a military gun and they just didn't see the point of going back really finely to get rid of all these little tiny machine marks. Right. So check this out, Matt, on this guy. What is this right here? Is that someone's name? So I would think so. I mean, it's like P plus e. Baden. Yeah. So and this one has the P marking on it as well, guys. So this might is that it right there? What is that? And that might no, be a proof that's marking. That's like a proof marking. So I'll get a close up on the camera here in a second. But it looks like there's a name <laughs> engraved on the top of the yeah. barrel. So maybe it was or uh, something like that. So uh, maybe that was a gift or a dedication. Yeah. No. And a lot of these guns too, after the fact, and we were, you were talking about um, officers and their pistols and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It was very, very common for officers to receive pistols as gifts. Yeah. Personally, you know, either commemorating, maybe not necessarily with these, but commemorating a battle they've won or something, right. you know, extraordinary that they did. Um, and uh, a lot of times, men were very, uh, were very appreciative to officers who yeah. led them well in combat, and they could, you guys, you know, and uh, the yeah. 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 yeah, got them yeah. a lot. And they would want to commemorate the officer who they felt you know, kept them safe. Right. Super cool. Yep. 
getting 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 replaced. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's another thing about these too is you just never know what you're gonna get when you open yeah. the box up and there's so much mystery that can be behind these guns, especially if they were in private collections and stuff like that. Right. Should have been my oh yeah. I mean, I think we're certainly ending here on a high note. Like, I haven't seen anything that had more than some pretty light finish wear. Yeah. yeah. Um, occasionally, there's been a little bit of scratching and stuff, but again, you know, these have had a long history of just existing, you know, being right. in someone's hands, being in storage, being in someone's collection. And, you know, you can expect that even guns like these are going to have some kind of wear, cosmetic, uh, but, you know, they're still fantastic pieces of history. And I think we've come, narrowed it down at least yeah. to our favorites here. So we've we've each gone through a handful of guns now. I've selected my favorite here, this beautiful 06 at 0624, and I think it totally beats y'all's. Nah, I don't think it's as nice mm. as mine. It does. I Mine's it does. got a name, bro. On the <laughs> on the barrel. That's cute. <laughs> Which one? What about yours, Matt? So, I mean, I, I like mine because mine has, uh, first off, it's it's German manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves German-made stuff. So, uh, it's got that really cool Swiss insignia on it. So, yeah. even though it was German-made, we know it's a Swiss Luger. Right. Um, I love the early guns, the, uh, you know, the aesthetic, the wood grips, uh, the checkering where you actually are able to get a grip on some of these things. Mm -hmm. They're not smooth. Um, so, yeah, I think mine is the best. It's got the cool symbol and it's actually German-made. Yeah, well, I'm about to rain on all y'all's parade because mine is the best. Now, granted, mine doesn't have the knurling and all the fancy schmancy upgrades and stuff, but it's got somebody's name on the barrel. And to me, that kind of character that you get with a gun is just blows y'all's out the water. I'll agree that that is super cool, but I think with the little striping I've got in my grips, the knurling, the tang, and y'all even have tangs, that's, that's too bad. You're a tang. <laughs> I think that this one's just top dollar, man. Well, I do like your grips. I'll give you that. Yeah. But I mean, okay, so you have a little leather tail. I yes. mean, like so. Yeah. Yeah. Leather tail's great. Yeah. You don't have a tail, so it's just me and Clint battling here. You don't have a tail either. What are you talking about? But I mean, yeah. Name. But I got a name. So that's a ten plus. I, I can name my pistol. It's now officially like Molly. That's the name of my pistol. Molly. Yeah, Molly. Molly. It's not a bad name. There, my pistol has a name. It's not a right. grave job. Well, if you ain't first, you're last. And guys, my pistol <laughs> is first. With the name, the nice grips, no knurlings, not as fancy, but you still get the Swiss logo right there. Either way, <laughs> either way, all of these that you see right here, you're gonna have Clint's pick, you're gonna have Matt's pick, and you're gonna have Alex's pick. All of these are gonna be available for you guys, custom options to purchase, and well, the cool part about it is, not only are they Swiss Lugers, but they are heavily shown in this video. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you will know about. exactly what you were getting. You yep. were getting, on mine anyhow, somebody's name yep. with the P marking, and it just looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, mine's got the uh, Swiss mark up top with the Waffenfabrik burn. Waffen there you go. There it is, right on top of that toggle lock. And I think this one, yeah, and it was P-marked as well. And, and you know, speech is hard. Know. So it, it is sometimes. Um, and for me, you're gonna get that nice DWM made, Swiss marked with that cool shield. Actually, I didn't see a P-mark on here when I was looking at it, but you do have all the other really great features of those yeah. early guns. So. Yep. And guys, on mine, again, you're gonna get the name on the barrel, the P-marking, <laughs> no knurling, which is fine. Don't need none of that. Beautiful grips and blue you, you, you on this guy. You get the economy version of my gun. Hey, That's what you get. Economy's all right. Well, guys, I mean, I, I can't say that, you know, we've seen a bad gun, though. So, no, I mean, regardless of whether you get not. one of these three guns or any of the, you know, large number behind us, at this yeah, point, yeah. Um, we're about to fall down. There's so many piled yeah, up there. there. Are a lot back there. Um, I think that, you know, if you're looking in the to market to add to your Swiss collection, start a Swiss collection, yeah. Luger, you know, this is your the Luger collection, this is, do it. Yeah. this is yeah. it, man. Like, we have gotten so lucky to have these guns yeah. in. With the Swiss Absolutely. rifles, mm -hmm. even the older antique models, yeah. um, with the P210s. Oh my god, the P210. Oh. You, I love Luger, but yeah. the P210s I mean, really not. You I missed been, out. No, I didn't miss out. I've been drooling over them. Oh, okay. I just wasn't here to go it through So, if there's does. rust spots, it's Clint drooling. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a fact. It's Clint's hand select. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> and then, now these Swiss Lugers. This has been an awesome week. 
to be a classic. I love working with classic yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> it's not bad. It's just you know too bad I miss most of the week. All right, anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this video here. Hopefully, you found it somewhat entertaining as we went through all of these Lugers here. Which I've got to say, this is probably the most Lugers I've seen at one time. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that makes me a little happy. I'm really happy. Uh, so guys, go check them out on our website. Don't forget to select the custom option that you're looking for as well. But also too, there's going to be three additional custom options. That's going to be my Matt and Alex picks mm -hmm. that are right here. And of course, I guess you can say technically these are hand selected by us. That's yeah. Right. And then right. I know and selected mine, with my hand. I'll send a signed sticker. I don't know if anybody wants my signature or not, but they're going to get it. And Ryan can get pans of all of the various models yes. that we have here. Absolutely. Well, I might throw in a couple of embarrassing photos of Alec. I don't know. Fair enough. Say. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we'll end it there. As always, we appreciate you and your business. Don't forget to sign up for the contest. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. We did not mention the giveaway. Oh, well, I yeah. mentioned it. But oh, I, mentioned I mean, yeah, we didn't yeah. cover it. Yeah. Though. I've, I've been out. Sorry, guys. I'll yeah, get better. I've been on promise. vacation all week, oh, dude. Come on. I know. I mean, man. every day is a vacation for him. Though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, that's that is true. Look at my job. All right. Hey. So what we've got here, guys, is a job. Stava M91 chambered in 7.62 by 54 R. If you haven't seen our announcement of this guy as our giveaway, head on over to that video. Check it out. We spoke with Matt over at Shot Show, talking specifically about this rifle coming from Zastava, uh, which is out of Serbia now. And man. I think it's pretty sweet. I love that rifle. Dude, it's it awesome. Is, it yeah. is so cool. So, hey guys, oh, go ahead. No, dude, I was gonna say, so just don't miss out. But yeah, what, yeah, I'd say, and then on say? this one, guys, yeah. you get the illuminated scope, two yeah. mags, and the sling as well. So this really is a package deal. Oh, and you know how so. I feel about 7.62 by 54R already, I'm yeah. sure. It's your, you it's your made us make yeah. a whole line of shirts. I mean, yeah. it is true. You really <laughs> did. You, you did that. All right, guys, now we'll end it there. Go get your entries in. We love you.